6 and ACEO. Sounds double Dutch to me. ACEO stands for Art Cards, Editions and Originals. Still doesn't make much sense. Tiny miniature works of art. So what's the deal with them? ACEOs all have to be 2.5 inches by 3.5 inches. That is the only rule. You can make them out of sawdust, mud, perhaps not. So why are ACEOs so popular? Well, for the collectors, they're small pieces of artwork, which means they can go in a folder or a small frame. They're very easy to store. Not everybody has the room to be able to hang large pieces of artwork and large prints. For collectors also, it means that they can purchase an original piece from you that is a very reasonable price to purchase in the first place and also to have shipped to them. In essence, it's a way of purchasing artwork from artists to see whether they like the style, then maybe go ahead and purchase a larger piece. So for artists, they're great because it means that you can ship your artwork out at less of an expense. You don't need as much packing material and of course they're very easy to sell online. They also provide you with a great tool to experiment with your artwork. If you're struggling with maybe a particular part of an animal like an eye or, or you're struggling to use a, a medium or something, you can experiment on an ACEO and if you're happy with the results then you can ultimately sell that. And so you can experiment, you can do 30 cat's eyes and you can concentrate solely on the cat's eye itself. That's still an ACEO, you can still sell it if you're happy with what you've, you've produced. And it means ultimately you're learning as you go through each ACO how a cat's eye might reflect the light or the different colorations and the iris and the pupil etc. Because they are only small, Ultimately, it means it takes less time for you to produce a finished piece of artwork than it would, say, an 8x10 piece. Not always the case, but the majority of the time they are a little quicker to produce. You won't use nearly as much of the medium doing an ACO as you will a larger piece. In regards to paper, same thing applies. You're only going to be using a small amount of paper, so therefore you're obviously going to be saving a little bit of money in regards to that. Obviously it does depend on how much you're going to sell your ACOs for in comparison to your larger pieces. But the other great thing is, is if you've done a large piece and maybe you've got a strip left over of your paper, you can use that to do your ACOs. So they are very cost effective in that manner. I should at this point also point out that sometimes they are referred to as ATCs, which stands for Artist Trading Card. Now this is not technically the right term. The reason for this is it's the middle bit. Artist Trading Cards are supposed to be traded amongst artists. The idea is that in the past they were used to um, hand out new styles, maybe new mediums that were tried and passed through from artist to artist. This also works with collaboration pieces, maybe somebody will draw the outline and somebody else will do the actual colouring process or whatever it might be. So the ATC is not actually technically correct, that is for trading and not for selling. So the ACEO is the one that you can sell and the ATC really should be the one that you trade. That being said, it can't harm if you do put on your listing that it's an ATC in the title because it seems to be that this general rule seems to have become a bit grey. So I wouldn't like for you to lose out on sales sticking to that. So to actually produce the ACOs you're going to need paper first obviously. Now you can purchase them ready cut. Um, these are packs by Dali and Rowney. I may be pronouncing that completely wrong. Sometimes I think they just name them so that they're far more complicated than they need to be. So I've got a drawing one here. 
um, the Bristol board and also the pastel one. I just have to show you this. God only knows what the flippy flop I'm to do with that one. But anyway. Now, if you prefer to have your paper pre-cut, that's fine. I don't actually like using that. The reason being is that as you're drawing and you get to the outer edge of the paper, particularly with coloured pencils, you'll find that your coloured pencil starts to make a really strong line on the edge of the paper. So it's not brilliant and it requires an awful lot more blending. The other thing I don't like about them is the fact that I don't necessarily use those papers. I might want to use my Stonehenge paper or I might want to use my Archer's watercolour paper or I might even want to use a piece of canvas. They don't do everything in those ranges. So although they are nice and, and particularly if you're just starting out, um, I, I would give those a whirl. So what I do recommend is you get yourself to your local DIY store, a place where they will cut glass and perspex to size and get yourself a 2.5 by 3.5 clear acrylic template. The reason it's clear is that if after you've done your ACO and you've maybe not taped the edges, you may have lost them while you're painting or using your coloured pencils, they may have completely vanished. To stop you from chopping your beautifully drawn tiger's head off, clear is the way to go. So how do I go about doing my ACOs? Here's a few that obviously this isn't, please ignore that, it just happens to be on the same sheet. So here's some that are done and in progress, having a bit of a lip theme at the moment, not entirely sure why. but um, So all I did was I took my template, drew a line round, I haven't taped these, if I'm doing maybe say a tiger and he's going all the way to the edge, I'm really going to be working the edge so I may just put some tape round. Um, to stop that line from disappearing. I don't always, it depends what mood I'm in to be honest. Um, so yeah, I'll just take my template, draw around and then I know what size image I'm looking at to draw. So I'll then draw my image and then obviously start with the colouring in or painting or whatever it might be. Now if you do lose those lines, on, the, on these obviously I haven't, you can still clearly see it. Well I'm hoping you can clearly see it. But then I would just simply take the template put it back over the top and I can line it up and draw around it and then cut the ACA out. So when it comes to selling them, I would strongly recommend eBay. eBay is a bit of a controversial place for artists I know, but it does generate an awful lot of traffic. You don't have to do an awful lot of grafting for people to see your listing. eBay, I don't know whether you've ever done a search for anything, but eBay will always show somewhere and it's normally at the top of your search. I'm not gonna sit here and go over the whole how to sell on eBay, but ACEOs are very, very popular on eBay and there are an awful lot of collectors on there. So I do strongly recommend that you try selling your ACEOs on eBay first. The majority of you will have done a Google search. Whether it be a new boyfriend or a new girlfriend, eBay will pop up on that search and it will have something to sell you. So they're very, very good at promoting the items that are on the site which is a bonus, particularly if you're just starting out because it's less work for you. Obviously you still need to advertise on your social media that you've listed something, but eBay will do a really good job of advertising your work if somebody Googles what is in your title. So your title is very, very important. Make sure that you put ACEO in there. If it's an original, put original. And obviously just a bit controversial, the ATC there's a bit of a grey area with that and people are using it in reference to ACEOs so it can't harm you to put that in the title. Um, there's only really one thing that you need to bear in mind other than your title and that is your price. Now there used to be this big fad, this big phase of 99 pence special. ACEOs used to go on at 99p whether they were Prince Originals and that was that. Please don't do this. The reason being is I don't know how many of you have got part-time jobs, but let's say the going rate is, let's just say £10 an hour. It's maybe a bit high for some folks, I'm not entirely sure. 
But it's a nice round figure and to be honest I'm really rubbish at math so I'm going for £10. So £10 an hour, you spend three hours doing your ACO. See this is why I like 10. 30 quid. That's without your medium. So any coloured pencils that you may have worn down, purchased, whatever, without your paper, without your plastic sleeve, without your certificate of authenticity, without your mount backing board, without your eBay fees and without your PayPal fees. So putting it on eBay for 99p really doesn't do yourself any favours at all. And it's very, very difficult to go up in price to a reasonable amount when you've started off at 99p in a short space of time. People are just going to start and expect your work to sell at 99p. And all you really need to remember is ACEO stands for Art Cards, Editions and Originals. Apparently I can't say that without wiggling my eyebrows. Stands for Art Cards, Editions and Originals. ATC stands for Artist Trading Cards and they are pretty much one in the same. One should be traded, one should be sold. The only rule with them is that they should be 2.5 inches by 3.5 inches. You can do them portrait, landscape, you can build them up with decoupage, mosaics, anything you like really. But that is the only rule that should apply. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this informative and you've enjoyed, don't forget to hit the subscribe button wherever it may be. I give up. And if you've really enjoyed, give us a thumbs up, stick us a comment in the comment section. If you'd like to support Majestic Art, then please don't forget you can head on over to Patreon where you can become a patron of Majestic Art. The link will be in the description.